This very special edition of Church Media Design TV is sponsored by Hillsong and the iHeart Revolution. Welcome to another edition of Church Media Design TV Tips, Tricks, and How To For You, the Church Media Designer. I'm your host, Brad Zimmerman, and as you can see, this is not a normal episode. We're not in our studio. We're actually at my desk today. You can see behind me the Three Wise Men and Jesus, as well as I think we have Yoda back there uh, as well today in my monitors and uh, chilling out at the desk because today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Uh, just recently, I was able to go see the I Heart Revolution um, movie that Hillsong United put out, social justice documentary. It premiered live in the United States and Canada, and it was an amazing experience. Uh, one thing I was yet again reminded of when I watched that movie is that media and what we create doesn't matter unless we're sharing that story of Christ, unless we're sharing where God is, how he's moving, how he's changing lives, and how can we join in his movement. Um, so I just want to challenge you guys and remind you of that. It doesn't have to do with any of the flash or anything like that. It's all about embracing God where he's at and joining him in his movement. Well, after that movie, I came back to my office the next day and I got an email from somebody via Vimeo saying, hey, check out this video. And it was a link to a three-part series that uh, Hillsong TV's uh, production team made that was all about how they produce Hillsong TV and the announcements that they do in their weekend um, gatherings that they do all across Australia and I think maybe outside of Australia as well. Um, and this was a really, really cool thing, and I watched it, and I was like, wow, this is such good information. So I got in touch with the owner of the video. His name's Nick Koo, I think. Uh, I'm not sure how to spell his last name. It's K-H-O-O, Nick, K-H-O-O dot com. You can check out his website there. And got in touch with him, and he said, I would love for you to be able to show that. And so I'm able to share that with all of you guys today. Um, so you guys are going to check out this video. And this isn't just about news and announcements. This is really about uh, production in the church and what it takes working with a team and how do you work with kids and all of these different things. And there's so many great insights to share and just stuff that you're going to hear from a different person and a new perspective. And I think you guys are going to love it. So uh, without further ado, check out the making of Hillsong News. My name's Tim Skinner and um, I've worked at Hillsong Church for three years now. My role now is to work as a producer, basically putting together um, videos from concept to final delivery and also oversee the content and work with our uh, pastors and leaders in understanding what it is they're trying to communicate and then making sure that we communicate that effectively. My name is Ryan Talbert and I'm a composer and post audio engineer for Hillsong Church. I compose music for conferences and ads and also do the post engineering for uh, church news. Hi, my name is Nick Koo and I'm a video editor for Hillsong Church. I came up through the youth group as a video editor and since then I've been freelancing and was eventually offered a position for to work full-time for Hillsong Church and I've been working here for the last five years. Um, we have church news to help inspire people that come to church every weekend about the significant um, events that are happening throughout the church calendar. During every service on the weekend, three minutes of that service is dedicated to church news, which just allows us to effectively and efficiently communicate what's happening in church life and why people should be a part of whatever the event is. Brand new Hillsong Brisbane campus. If you're new to church or came with a friend, we'd love to get to know you better over tea or coffee in our welcome lounge right after this service. 
We have a, um, a system called MaxiCal here at church, which is just basically the calendar for the church, where all the different departments have the information about you know, significant events that are happening are put into that calendar system. So on a weekly basis, I basically look long term and short term as to what the big things are that are coming up. I try and begin my work week on a Friday. So I plan for the following week's work on Friday so that when I show up to work on Monday morning, we begin executing the plan. Uh, once Tim has come down and had our brief of us, we will sort of go away and have a look at the script for, the, uh, for church news that he's left with us. And uh, we'll talk about basically what components we can do now and what components we have to wait to do for later. We'll look at constructing things like sound beds and uh, some just sort of slating things out and seeing and sort of mapping out a timeline for the rest of the week in terms of how long certain ads are going to take, what ads are going to take the longest to do. Uh, and once that's all accomplished, we sort of go to work on making these ads. In terms of the content for what goes into the news, you know, it's just like putting rocks in the jar. We put the big rocks in the jar first, so the big things that we promote would be things that affect the whole church, things like conferences, things like all church meetings, like our leadership vision nights with Pastor Brian. Anything that Pastor Brian and Bobby would like the whole church to be at, those would be big rocks. And then we put the medium-sized rocks in, things that may affect a group of uh, a certain you know demographic of the church, like the Hillsong Sisterhood with the women, um, or a special healing meeting or a prayer service of some sort. And then we put the smaller rocks in if we can fit them, things that maybe affect less people. And usually by the time we've done that, there isn't much time um, in, in the news for us to promote anything Occasionally we get uh, to a point where there are people who are very inspired and very enthusiastic to produce an ad, but clearly they have no artwork or they have no idea of what they want to produce, which is fair enough. I mean, not everybody can be inspired all the time. This is where we tend to kind of go to our sort of, I guess our inspiration box. We make it a point in our team to make sure we have these ideas for ads. Uh, that are coming up and to kind of kind of pull out of this box and go, well actually, you know, what would be really great is if we sort of adapt this idea and make it into an ad. Uh, I think that's, I think it's a lot better for ed editors to kind of be proactive in terms of making sure they have something to pull from in case somebody just springs something on you that you're, uh, that they don't have an idea of what to do. So, and most of the time, they may not necessarily always go for that idea, but at least you can present that idea. One of my favorite sites to go to is Motionographer, which is a, it's a great place to just sort of look at the motion graphics works that's just out there in, in the world and on the internet. It sort of inspires us to be better at what we do. Uh, there's also places like Video Copilot with Andrew Kramer, which is a great place to just sort of do tutorials. And there's various After Effects tutorials that you can go to and have a look at. Um, you'll be able to find a lot of that stuff on the resource DVD that we'll be giving out with this documentary. But um, me personally, I pull from places like movie trailers. I find it really interesting that movie trailers can sort of convey so much emotion in such a short amount of time, especially with the way they craft the soundtrack and the sound effects and how they just pull images together. And it's not really like, it's not necessarily a lot about motion graphics, but just about the way a story gets told through you know, the images and sound. And I, I personally love drawing stuff like that from movie trailers. When I first started working here, one of the things that I found really helpful to me was a creative brief. This was a simple document that had about 35 questions on it about what the, what the promotion was, why the promotion needed to be put out. One of the key questions on the creative brief is if there's one core message that you get, could get across in the ad, what would that be? And so when people answer the questions on the creative brief, you get to understand not only what it is they want promoted, but why they want it promoted and the language that they want um, used. It's good to ask the right questions. And I find the right questions are usually like, well, how do you want to feel at the end of this uh, ad? So for example, uh, the Hillsong Conference ads that we've been making uh, have to be, have been designed to be inspirational. And uh, so we always tailor things like the music has to be, has to draw you in, but also sort of build to an impact and uh, sort of just a great speaking clip and there's a lot of whooshes and sound effects, almost like a cinema trailer in some respects. I think the psalmist David, he got it right when he said, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him? But I'll tell you, here's the miracle tonight. 
that even though we're little bitty teeny tiny people, we, you and me, are prized by majesty and we have been sent for by the God of all creation who stamped his very image of glory into our hearts. And here's the thing, so what that God can call the stars by name? That is impressive, I will give you that. But what is more amazing is he could call your name and call you by your name and you by yours. And he could go around this arena and name every single person in the building because we are known by this great, massive universe breathing God. We are his made in his glorious no matter what the video project is that we're working on at church, I find that rather than waiting for information to come to me that I make that we make a plan and we begin pursuing that plan and then we can make adjustments if we need to along along the way. The second habit that's really effective and helpful is to begin with the end in mind and that means before you actually go about creating a project, it's really, really important for you to have an image in your mind of what that project will look, feel, sound, uh, and, and basically feel like before you actually go about trying to create it. I've found since working here at Hillsong TV that the most successful projects, in my opinion, that we've produced are those have been w that have been well thought out, well planned, well scripted, well documented, and then well executed. When we're producing videos, uh, we have found over the last few years that the most effective way for us to work and do what we do is to work in a high definition format. Because, as you know, many people may have seen, um, with the multi-screen setup that we have, so that's the three screens that are joined together in our convention center and in our southwest, in our Brisbane and our city campus, with those three screens that are joined together, we sometimes want to stretch our videos out over those three screens. And so to work in a high definition format gives us the resolution that we need in order to be able to work in a multi-screen or a single screen format. It also means that the resolution in terms of color rendition or you know color rendering uh, when you're capturing the video is better the the uh, response to light so the contrast the contrast and the highlights and the shadows and all of that in the videos are typically better in a high definition format if you were to come into our um, television production studio you would see that we use JVC high definition cameras um, for the shoots that we do in the studio we typically record the audio directly into the cameras using either a shotgun mic that's just on a mic stand above you know the person that we might be interviewing or speaking to or a lapel mic on someone that's presenting to camera but sometimes when we go out into the field and we have more complex setups we would also use an audio location uh, engineer someone that has a simple four channel mixer um, and that you know the audio engineer just basically manages the uh, all, all the audio inputs on the mixer which then gets run into the um, JVC camera. In video, what's funny, something that I found interesting in playing with videos is, especially in the lighting of videos, is that you have to be conscious in lighting videos to light the subject of the video and to light the background of the video. And typically, if the background of the video is darker proportionately to the subject of the video, it's going to make the, the subject of the video stand out a little bit more and give you a little bit more of a three depth separation between the foreground, the subject, and the background. Advise your camera operators to make sure they don't overexpose stuff or underexpose stuff, and also make sure that their sound is clean. And, I don't, and by clean, I mean it's not too low and it's not too high, but it's just sitting right in the middle and it doesn't distort. I can't put enough emphasis to on the fact that audio needs to be good. I mean, more so than picture, but your audio needs to be brilliant. Um, if you can nail your audio, your picture will be, even if it's, even if it's not great, uh, there's so many things you can do to picture to kind of make it better, but if your audio is bad, then you're in trouble. Sound for me is incredibly important. People can see pictures, and a picture is worth a thousand words. But all you have to do is turn the sound off on a feature film, and suddenly the emotion and the atmosphere is gone, and the impact is also gone. So for me, having whenever a video is made and there's someone talking, to have the best possible quality of audio recording 
that you can that you can possibly get is very very important and one of the ways you can do that whether you have a lot of money or a little bit of money is just by investing in a good quality microphone whether that would be a wired lapel microphone or a, a simple shotgun microphone and on very practical terms getting the source of the microphone as close to the person who's talking as possible just means that you eliminate a lot of background noise there's nothing worse than watching videos that where someone's talking and you hear all the background and you can't really hear the, hear the subject this is an easy way around that get the mic close to the person that's actually talking i know there's a lot of debate about whether to use a tripod or not to use a tripod and again i think the style of the outcome of the video warrants whether or not you should or should not use a tripod there are very few feature films that are shot handheld. The vast majority of feature film, which we, you know, would go to the cinemas and see and watch, are, are typically shot on some sort of camera support system. Whether that would be on a track or on a crane or on a dolly or on a, on a still tripod, a tripod just simply helps bring stability to the shot. Now, there are times when handheld is, is cool and it may be fresh or innovative, but then, you know, if that's just someone randomly holding a video camera, flopping it all over the place, to me, that doesn't lend itself to necessarily to a professional result. One of the videos that we worked on this past year was um, our Vision Sunday presentation, which you know our team has put together every year. And I found it such a delight to work with a professional city camera operator who shoots everything from the sports here in Australia, around the country, to feature film. So he works on digital video format all the way to you know film. It was fantastic to go around the city and watch this guy work because he was so methodical and systematic in finding the shot, exposing the shot, composing the shot, then shooting the shot. And when we got all the footage back into this edit suite, we had six hours of pure gold that you could use no matter what, you know, what section of the tape you're looking at. Every shot was perfect. So I think professional results are achieved that way. Fantastic lighting, great quality sound, paying attention to your foreground, paying good attention to the exposure of the shot, planning all of that, then executing it. When you do that, I think you get great results, whether that's on a $100,000 camera or on a tiny little $5,000 handy cam. Sometimes people may say, well, maybe my posture's not very good or comfortable in front of the camera what do I do? And I think that if your senior pastor knows that your heart is actually to serve him, that perhaps with time and building a relationship of trust, you can help him to become better. Um, one thing I love about working with Pastor Brian is that he always asks us whatever video that we're making with him, how it is, and I've just determined that I'm going to tell him how I think it is. And so if I think it's really good, I'll tell him, I think that was really good. But there's some times where I don't think it was really good. And so I'll tell him, well, I don't think that was very good. You said this, and have you thought about this? If, if you say it that way, could it have, you know, be interpreted to mean that, this, that, or the other? And what I found working with Pastor Brian is that he wants us, the, the TV team at Hillsong, to be honest, direct, and kind in giving him feedback. Right now, which is all about glorifying God, minister life to you. Is that too short? Yeah, perfect. Hi there, and welcome to Hell Song Church. A very happy Mother's Day to all the mums. Yeah, mums rock, especially my mum. Ditto! My... If you're new to Hill Song Church or you came with a friend, we'd love to get to know you better in our welcome lounge right after this service. Then our next Kingdom Builders breath key is this Saturday. Before I worked at Hillsong Church, I used to work with the Watoto Children's Choir, and I, I feel like I learned a lot about working with children. And one of the things I learned is that children have a short attention span, but at the same time, they have a great capacity to do what you ask them to do. So long as you are clear about communicating your expectations to children from the beginning, giving them some sort of a goal to achieve, and then holding them to that standard, I find children produce great results. One of the favorite videos that um, people, uh, you know, have given us great feedback about here at church was last year when we did our Mother's Day videos. We used kids to do our church news and people absolutely loved it. It was really cute. It was a lot of hard work to make that happen, but 
you know, you have to work in bite-sized chunks with kids and you have to give them just a little bit of time and be real upbeat and positive and enthusiastic with them. Keep the camera rolling the whole time because sometimes the gold happens when, you know, you're expecting at least with kids. And then, you know, if you're working with a number of kids, I find if you rotate them, so maybe work with one child for 10 minutes, then rotate and work with the next child for 10 minutes, then rotate and work with the next child for 10 minutes. If you can break it up, keep the attention span nice and short, keep it real punchy, give them lots of cues, lots of real good direction, lots of encouragement. I think kids can bring a great dimension to, to any video that you produce at church. Just pretend you're 23 and you're married to someone else, not me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you're a mom. Oh, hey Tim, it's uh, John here. Uh, just ringing up to see if you want to come down and talk about church news. Yeah, are you ready to show me what you've got? Um, yeah, just a basic layout. Okay, great. I'll be there in about five minutes. All right, cool. All right, Good. see you. Bye. The more you put into the relationship with your engineers and your editors and the post-production team during that phase of the project, the more you're going to get out. I think editors hate the feeling of a producer sitting over their shoulder making little canny decisions and little petty decisions about every little edit and every little cut that they're making. So I hope that I've learned to paint a clear picture for an editor, document that picture, make sure that before we leave the discussion that the editor can speak back to me, this is what we're gonna do, this is how we're gonna do it, I understand, so that I understand that they understand, and then once we're at that point, I just love to set the editors free for a couple of hours, a day, a couple of days, and let them do it. You can see the waveform where it goes, the S of hearts. <clears throat> there, just go frame by frame and you'll hear it. Yeah, that'll work. Just try it, just like that. Yeah. That's pretty much the information of the night. So. Yeah, but man, we gotta get the emotion. So we need that you are, that's how I wanna start. Alpha and Omega. Okay, I don't think I've seen that. Look on the, um, look on the XAN real quick. We also have a centralized uh, network system as well called, uh, called the XAN. So we keep everything on there. Multiple users can access this. Uh, central media system at the one time. All right, we're in the inner sanctum, the heart of the edit suites here. This is where it all happens, the XSAN storage solution. See all these pretty lights here? That's Apple for you. They love their pretty lights. <laughs> we have 15 terabytes of storage here. Uh, we, you would think, oh, that's plenty. No worries, but I don't, look at the editors. They filled it up once again. All right, the XN runs on three separate networks. It needs fiber channel, which is all this orange cable right here, you can see. Um, it's got two gigabit ethernet that it needs. It needs a public ethernet and a metadata so that it can keep all its data running. The XN system has multiple banks of drives. So in a normal system, if you lose one drive, you would lose everything all at once. The, uh, the way we get around that problem is we do what's called a RAID. We stripe the drives together in a form that if one drive dies, then the whole RAID doesn't go down. So we have here seven banks of RAIDs. So in each bank, we could lose two drives. So in total, that's uh, 14 drives that could die, and we wouldn't lose any data at all. If you want to make a great ad for Church News or just an ad in general, I suggest nailing the audio bed. Like nailing the audio is, in my opinion, probably the most important part of any ad that you do. And I don't mean, if you can, if you can emote people using your audio and really drawing people in using music and sound effects and just a voiceover and stuff like that, if you can nail that, then most of your work is already done. I mean, I've seen, you'll get, if you kind of show an ad to an audience and you have an ad that has very average audio but the visuals are astounding but you also but you have a you have a video which has very kind of not poor visuals but the visuals aren't nearly as good but the audio is excellent i promise you the one with the best audio will win every single time the programs i use to create my music and uh, mix the audio is cubase i use cubase to compose in and i usually uh, mix it in pro tools the process that happens for when I'm making music is uh, a lot of the TV guys will come to me and just kind of brief with me of what they're looking for, 
uh, show me some reference tracks, things like that, and I'll, I'll sit down and I'll just kind of brainstorm myself with a piano usually. Sometimes we'll need a more high impact, you know, film trailer type sound. And what I'll do is I just come and load up a VST instrument, which you can purchase um, soundsaligned.com or anywhere like that. And they have different types of sounds, different percussion, orchestra, um, whatever works for you. Okay, here, so I'm just gonna load up Stylus RMX, which is a groove engine. And uh, I'll just load up a simple beat, a more high impact film score type sound. Now just drag it in my session here. And I'll loop that several times, and there I have a nice percussion loop. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'm going to load up another library, which will allow me to have different strings and any, any orchestral instruments. So I'm going to load up just some staccato strings. And you can just record them in fairly easily. I didn't like what I just did. <laughs> Hello, it's Tim speaking. How can I help you today? Okay, when did you find out about this? Can you just help me understand what it is that you're after? So, um, all right. How are you, George? So pretty much, um, we just got some last minute news. And um, yeah, they want to add a, an ad to church news. Um, for the release of the album. And uh, yeah, so um, right now I've got to add an extra ad to news, but to do that, I've got to cut back on my other ad to, so that news doesn't go over three minutes. So this is the uh, challenge I got, and it's, it's uh, four o'clock, and um, yeah, fun times, fun times, yeah. Meeting deadlines is a funny thing, and I don't like to admit it, but sometimes it's a bit of an opportunity cost kind of thing. You have to kind of figure out, well, you have a, a, finite, a finite amount of time to kind of get your ads completed, but sometimes quality can suffer a little bit when they don't give you enough time to do things, and unfortunately, that's what happens. We work very fast um, at Hillsong Church as an editing team, but occasionally we get those moments where we just don't have enough time to really nail those ads, so Unfortunately, some of the ads that go out, they're not bad, but you have to kind of think, well, where do I need to spend the most time in to kind of get the maximum output that I want to get on? And like I said before, with the audio stuff, if you, I think it's worthwhile nailing things like audio and then spending less time on the visuals. At our church, we're a multi-campus church, so we have a campus in Sydney in the Hills District and of the city in the southwest. There are about 14 or 15 extension services around Sydney, and we have our campus now in Brisbane. Each of those campuses play back church news on the weekend. So when I started working here, we used to produce about 14 versions of church news every weekend. And now we've sort of streamlined and consolidated all of those efforts so that all of those extension services and campuses play the same version of church news across the weekend. Once we have all those different versions lined up, we get Tim to come down and check the versions with us. Uh, check spelling, check sound, check everything, make sure all the slates are right. And then once that's all done, we send it all out uh, to as quick times. Then we render out the MPEGs. We bring it into DVD Studio Pro. We make the menus up. We send all the versions that need to go to Watch Out, which is our playback system for church. We check the DVDs. Uh, thoroughly, uh, check that all the buttons work and everything is right, and then we send the DVDs to be duplicated. We make about, I think we make about 20 copies of each of these DVDs for the different campuses. Then we go to Watch Out and we check the playbacks for Watch Out, make sure that everything is going to play through perfectly. We check it thoroughly uh, all the way through. If there's a mistake, we have to go back and change it and then bring it back to Watch Out and check it all again. 
And then once that's all said and done, um, we get the DVD labels printed. We just start distributing the DVDs into the pigeon holes uh, to all the different campuses, and we email all the campuses and tell them that Church News is ready and ready to go for the weekend. I know before I came to Hillsong that I used to watch the DVDs, the praise and worship DVDs, and the videos that were made, and I was seriously blown away. I remember thinking the first time I came to Hillsong Church, how on earth do they do they do that? You know, like how do they make that happen and how do they do this and how they and it just was always it was such a mystery to me. And I guess I feel so thankful for the opportunity to work here because, you know, I kind of get to see um, one of the things about about this place is that there's always a lot happening, so you don't get to see everything. But when you work at Hillsong, you do get to see a lot of how everything is put together. And what I've learned, one thing that I've learned, is that working together with a creative vision, with good communication, using the resources at your disposal, being diligent with those resources, working as a team collaboratively, valuing the, the capacity and the contribution of everybody on the team, that's actually how the, get, the job gets done. This is church. Our hosts are going to serve you. We're going to look at church news. Awesome. I knew I should have gone into real estate. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. And thanks again to the guys at Hillsong and Nick Koo. Um, thank you guys so much for putting that together. And if you guys want to find out more information about what goes on over at Hillsong, check out hillsong.com or nickkoo.com and you can find out more information about them. If you have any questions for me or have any thoughts, uh, we're going to be taking a break here soon in the new year, and so we're going to be coming back with a whole new show. But if you guys have any questions, hit me up, brad at churchmediadesign.tv. Leave a comment on the website or uh, find me on Twitter, twitter.com slash cmdtv. So uh, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you guys later. <laughs>